G'day, it's Mike here and I'm deep in the heart of the Idaho wilderness with no tent, food or matches. For the next four days I'm improvising shelter, living off the land and exploring the mountains. As an Aussie, I'm used to crocodiles and kangaroos. This place is a whole new ball game. If I'm dead in the morning, you'll know why. I'm gonna head off with uh, a pack, it's got no food in it. I've got a tarp that I can probably make some kind of shelter out of. I've got no matches and I'm gonna just head up and live off the land. I've got bear spray on my belt. I've practiced how to use it. There was a bear in camp here already. So as an Australian, it's all kind of new doing this kind of stuff with bears around. Another layer of spice. My pack probably weighs about 16, 17 kilos. Plenty of camera gear, drones, power banks. And I've probably got maybe a thousand vertical meters to hike today. And I'm aiming for a, a lake. Just hopefully got fish in it. I won't see you, buddy. Don't follow me. Stay. Go, ah, 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 stay. In preparation for this trip, I was base camped here with Clay Hayes. Clay was the winner of Alone Season 8. He's an expert traditional bow hunter and he's had a lot of experiences all over the states out in the woods and he's been showing me the specifics of American plants and animals. So I've got plenty of experience in Australia. I've done a lot of hardcore survival expeditions over long periods and I was also a military survival instructor. So the idea of this trip is to solidify what I've learned in the American woods. Before I get too far, I want to collect some materials to start a fire without matches using friction. So I'm going to look for some dead willow that is in the shape of a spindle and a base plate. This feels harder than what I'm used to starting fires with in Australia, but apparently it's okay. But I think I might cut a fresh one too and just start that drying process. So within a day or two, I've got something else to experiment with. These fresh ones will go on the outside in the sun to dry out as I hike up the hill. It's a nice dry grass for tinder. Uh, might rain later, there may not be much of this stuff around. So this is bear country. I visited the Idaho Fish and Game Department before coming out here to buy a fishing license and they recommended this area I should definitely be having bear spray on me. I spoke to Clay about it. He's not so worried because they're mostly black bears around here, like the ones that have been visiting his camp. It's the grizzlies which are more of a problem, but there is still a chance that you can come across them out here, just not as high as the black bears. This is cow poo. So it's really, really dry. The reason I want cow pat is like most herbivorous poos, they're really good for starting fire. So when you put your ember, you put it on there and it spreads throughout the poo. Oh, this looks like a rose hip. That's one of these I've seen. Chewy seeds, lots of vitamin C. If it doesn't taste bad, it's a bonus. This I think is a balut mushroom. So it's got spores, but not gills. It's yellow. And apparently there's nothing else like it that is poisonous. Actually, the smaller ones taste better. The American bush has such a different feel to it. I mean, it's the, it's the pines is the biggest thing, but it's the mountains, it's the scrub, it's the lack of undergrowth, actually. This is my first time alone in the States, like in the bush alone. And I'm really looking forward to it. Look at these beautiful colours. It's coming into fall or autumn as I would call it. But it's just, I mean, what a spectacular view. We're quite high here, probably about 9,000-ish feet, so roughly 3,000 vertical metres. So the trail is steepened. A seat like this, it's too good to pass up where you can rest your pack without having to take it off your back. There's a cave over on that ridge there. There's a fair bit of limestone around here. That's another option actually, is to sleep in a cave. This isn't limestone, it's quartz around here. It looks like it's gonna get rainy. That might be an option. I'm still pinching myself that I'm in the United States hiking. It's awesome. Like it's, there's a part of America that kind of feels like home just because we've seen so much of it on TV and movies and stuff. You kind of feel like you're home when you're here. It's kind of weird. Rockfall. Wow, it is unbelievable. <laughs> wow.
came to set up the camera to get a shot of me walking into this area and there's some very large prints i think they're large dog prints which makes me think wolf bear spray works on wolves <laughs> i think it works on everything so i've got a, quite a few things i would like to have done by tonight but i'll set my expectations low that way i can't disappoint myself i've got about an hour and 20 of sunlight if i'm going to start a fire i really want to do it while the sun's on me because uh you know that extra temperature is less temperature that i have to get my friction fire up to 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 light but i really just want to go fishing the little boy in me wants to do that i think i might just have a cast just because i cannot help it it just looks like the most beautiful water Oh, I think I just saw a fish swimming away. Oh, yep. Come on. Must have seen that. Here we go, here we go, come on. Oh, he looked at it. Not quite as easy as I thought. Oh, there's a rise out there. That's the second rise I've seen. So, they're taking flies, insects off the surface. I don't know why the trout here are cagey, but... Uh, they are so doesn't matter there's more tricks up my sleeve than just a lure campsite options i mean the no-brainer place to have a fire is is there someone's it looks like several people have had fires there i mean i would have liked my own little supplier place but it just doesn't feel right to burn a new fire scar so next thing fire by friction all right i need a little fire bow That'll do. Yeah, that's about right. This is not national park. You are allowed to cut wood here, and this is dead. <laughs> These little curly bits are great for starting fires. This is the rock that split apart when I tried to hit the back of the knife, which might be good enough to do the trick. Tinder bundle. I don't want to be stingy. That's looking good. The cow poo, still looking a little green. Full length of the bow. It's a little bit brown. I prefer it if it was a darker color. So I'll increase the speed. Not quite sure why it's not bursting into a, an ember. So I couldn't quite get it hot enough to get an ember. So I tried various combinations with the dried willow spindles and base plate. And then I went and used that stump that I'd cut down, the dead one, which I think was spruce. Carved a spindle out of that and tried with that as well, but just could not get anything to go. Each stream out of that bloody hole. All right, I'll finish this off tomorrow, I reckon. Because the sun's gone down, those wind gusts come through, it cools it down. Uh, but I'm pretty close. I'm trying to figure out how to get up a bit of a shelter tonight. I was going to wander around to the other end of the lake there and go for fish while there's some daylight left and uh, by the time I get back I guess it'll be dark and I'll probably go to bed because I've got nothing to eat and no fire to sit around. <laughs> right, I'm going to change lures. I uh, fished right around the other side of the lake and they still won't take a lure. A couple of hits but they just won't really strike solid. So I'm just going to wander my way back around and probably jump into bed. Alrighty, home sweet home. Sort of. It's kind of probably just a temporary shelter. Uh, when it blows, the it slaps on the shore. Feels like something. It's like something's walking out, but you get that. <laughs> anyway, hopefully there's no wolves or bears, whatever. I'm just gonna hopefully go to sleep. Wake up in the morning. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Otherwise, it's gonna all go to poo. <sighs> morning. Didn't rain. I was warm enough. Check out the sunrise. I'm going to change from my spinning reel to a fly fishing reel. I don't even know if it fits in this rod because they basically just won't take lures. 
So I'm going to try a fly and it's called a wolf. The dry fly sits on the surface, looks like a bug uh, or an insect that has landed on the water. And I've seen the trout rising, so getting other insects off the top of the water surface. So hopefully this will work. I can see a couple of small brook trout sitting right there. Come on fishies. I'm gonna head around to the head of the lake. See if he comes up. Here he comes, he's coming up, he's coming up, he's coming up, he's coming up. Come on, grab it. Grab it. Oh. Here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. Yes, oh, got him, yes. <laughs> Finally. Little brook trout. He's one of the smaller ones. Uh, there's much bigger ones in there. Because I haven't eaten for 24 hours, I'm gonna keep this small one. There's no legal size limit on them. There's a bag limit of 25. The last fish kind of destroyed this fly. The dry fly, so I'm actually gonna try a wet fly instead. Woolly bugger, as we call it in Australia. I'm gonna crimp the barb off this one too. Because this one's like a lure, you strip it back. This is kind of the action of the fish. It's midday and the sun has reached my camp. Put my solar panels out here. Otherwise I would have missed out on four hours of charging. So I'm just using a 20 watt panel and charging 20,000 milliamp hour battery which kind of just keeps up with my camera batteries. Because I cast right handed, the wind's blowing left to right. If I, if I cast where the camp is, the line gets blown and gets caught in my back. Uh, I've had one fish come up, have a look at the wet fly but they're just not really into it. I finally hooked one on the wet fly. Awesome. Yeah, beauty. He's a little bit bigger. Different variations of color on the same fish. And it's got row in it. What I always do with fish is cut their stomach open, see what they've been eating. Their stomach seems pretty empty. Caddis. Couple of little insects, not much. I would normally remove the bloodline, but I'll leave it because I need all the nutrients I can get. And I'll use some of this for bait. Ah, a little piece of trout meat on there, unweighted hook. Hasn't gone far, doesn't need to. Heard my drag going then. Oh, hey, awesome. <laughs> Seeing as I've lost that uh, other fly, that's really good news. So I've used two kinds of lures, two kinds of flies, and now bait. And this is the biggest fish yet. And I just sat there doing nothing. I was actually having a bit of a nap while just contemplating life. It's been 24 hours since I've eaten. And I've already started to feel that slight lack of energy where your body's shifting from the sugar that's already dissolved in your blood and it's kind of running out of that. So it's going, okay. And it starts to switch in a kind of different energy mode. So I put the fire lighting stuff in my tinder bag. So I'm gonna pull the stuff out so I can properly dry. just couldn't get a fire to go with the old dry wood that I collected so I switched to the fresh wood that I cut but it just I knew it looked too green and it wasn't going anywhere so I had to come up with a different plan so I'm just scraping off all of these leftover bits of dust which is great for fuel and try something else to get the temperature high enough in my camera case I've got a macro lens which I stick on the front to do extreme close-ups of like bees and flies and stuff and it's going to act like a magnifying glass. 
will get that ember pile into an ember. Yeah, that looks like it's done it. That would normally happen with good wood. Um, you would normally get this ember just from the friction fire method, but that's the perfect fuel to now let spread into a nice big uh, coal. I'm just gonna scrape it off into the tinder bundle. All right, this is where I wanna turn my back to the wind. There we go, flame. <laughs> this is why I left all these other little sticks around here as well. Yeah, so I've been instructing survival down in Panama uh, only a few weeks ago, and I was putting in a quarter of the effort and getting flame, no worries. It's just a combination of the wood's probably not just right. Plus, I'm close to 10,000 feet here in elevation. There is changes in oxygen, but probably most importantly, it's the wind and the temperature. There's still ice on the ground. There's snow just over there on the ground, and that makes it harder. So in a way, I'm kind of cheating <laughs> because uh, I wasn't planning on using a lens. That idea only just came to me. I was lying there going, geez, what are we gonna do? <laughs> I need to cook these fish. I don't want to waste them. Uh, and then I just thought through all of the items in my equipment. Uh, I thought, oh, I don't want to destroy my camera. And then I thought, oh yeah, there's that lens. So anyway, uh, this is great. I can now cook my fish. That is a full meal, totally. Fire without matches, five trout. Beautiful blue lake, big mountains, America. How good. I just pulled it out of the fire and dropped it on these coals here, which is not good. Tastes like a combination between fish and eggs. Nice. The last time I was eating trout, I was in Tasmania, south of Australia, living off the land, and I was starving in the end for 70 days all up. and. I had to eke every single calorie out of the trout and I couldn't afford to lose any meat or fat into the fire. So I tended to fry everything in an enclosed pan and I ate the guts. And I was so hungry that I was able to do it, but I found now I wasn't hungry enough after only being out here for two days to eat the guts. So I just ended up eating the flesh and using the guts for bait. I'm stuffed, I ate as much trout as I could. And I'm just lying back. It's probably only 40 minutes of sunshine. I should be going and doing something practical, but I just, I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a nice little, enjoy the afternoon radiant sun rays and just looking up. I mean, look how blue the skies are here. It's because we're up quite high. We're close to 10,000 feet and it's just, the blue is blue, so much bluer than normal. Got a spare trout for the morning and a bit of bait. I'm just putting them well away from my camp so the bears don't visit. Last rays of sunlight, just about to disappear off camp. This tarpaulin setup is pretty shabby, just because I don't have a much paracord, so I'm actually gonna just pull two of the seven inner strands out of this so I can make some better guy ropes. I could pull it all out, but it kind of fluffs up and it's, it's kind of handy to um, keep it stored inside another piece of paracord because you can't put it back in there once it's come out Well, it's no work of art, but I've just adjusted my shelter a bit because it was getting so windy the sleeping bag was blown away This is a much bigger fire than I would normally have but Now that I've finished cooking uh, I need to get a big bank of coals up so it'll last all night because If I have to do the magnifying glass trick in the morning the Sun doesn't get here till 12 so I want to be able to blow it up from a coal in the morning. Check this out. This bit of snow left over from last year. It's already started snowing this year, so you know you have a couple of big years and this becomes permanent, you end up with a glacier. I mean, this whole valley was formed when a glacier dead-ended and stopped, and that dammed up the lake. Looks like a tent from back here. So I just sent a message to Clay just to let him know what I'm doing each night, otherwise, you know, something happens and you're a solo person, it's always good to let someone know where you are each time. Crank the fire up again. Definitely some thicker clouds coming through. 
I uh, hope, uh, hope the weather doesn't get a lot worse. Pine really doesn't make much in the way of coals, it just disappears. I'm used to hardwood eucalyptus. So that's one great thing about the Aussie bush. Uh, I'm feeling tired, but that's what happens when you stop eating sugar and carbohydrate and as much food as you normally do. I'm looking forward to getting in my sleeping bag. Put my down pants on. So it just started raining and getting gusty. The wind's coming from different directions. Worried about getting wet and also this thing blowing away or just blowing open. Uh, it rained for a good couple of hours last night. So I bagged up my stuff. That's my camera gear. Uh, that's my pack. Uh, that's pretty wet. The tarp water was dripping through my face and stuff. So I propped up the tent in a few extra places. I'm uh, definitely feeling more tired today. Um, by lunchtime, it would have been only 1 million 48 hours. So it's just harder to motivate yourself to get out of bed. It's not the end of the world, but you just feel flat. So this is how I cook these bones. So they just go from looking like normal bones. They basically go as chalky, slightly yellow color, and then you can eat them, just crunch them up, and they taste almost like chips. Really crunchy. So these ones are juniper berries. They look like blueberries. The aftertaste is fairly strong. That's one thing about the American bush. It just seems to have a lot more fruits and berries in it. This is the one of the creeks that feeds the lake. I'm just gonna move a little bit. There he goes, see that? That's why I see this bush here. This is the kind of thing that they're so twitchy to seeing people that you kind of sometimes got to hide behind something like this if you want to get a cast in. So I got no idea if there's berries up here. Really, I was just looking for an excuse to explore this beautiful place. Just something about it. It just looks so lush and green and beautiful. These old junipers can be up to a thousand or two thousand years old. At the base of this is a gooseberry plant. There's kind of one lonely gooseberry left. It's late in the season. It's October. It's kind of a place where you think you'd run across a, a bear or something. In fact, I've seen no big game sign at all. No droppings, footprints. I've got to get back down the valley. Uh, the weather is closing in. It's it's getting cold. From here on, I'm, I'm kind of on my way out. I'm gonna to stop tonight at a cave on the way down, although there's some more up. And then I'm kind of working my way back slowly to Australia over a very long period of um, hitchhiking, cars and flights. This just symbolically feels like the pinnacle of the journey. And, and from here on, I'm kind of walking back home. I've had it described to me in detail about this mushroom and that there's nothing else like it that's kind of poisonous. Um, I've identified that it doesn't have gills, it's got these spore holes, the coloration of it, the fact that um, when you break it, it the scars blue and you can eat it. So that's the only reason. Normally I just wouldn't bother with fungus, it's just not worth the risk. Mm, that's alright, mm, pretty good actually. I'm not going to eat the whole lot now, I'll eat just two pieces and then I'll take this with me and then I can eat it tonight that way if I start feeling crook I haven't eaten that much places like I found it fires completely out soaked in water time to go there's an elk he's looking at me look you can see his horns I can't move Fuck me, if you'll see me, he's looking my way. Yeah, the sound. 
See the horns? There's two white things in the middle. They're elk horns. I can't move because he'll, he's staring right at me. You can tell by the orientation of the horns. I had to take my pack off to get my camera out because I wasn't expecting to see much on this walk down. He can't. I don't think he can see me because look at those horns. You can see his ear. There he is. Look, there's his head. <laughs> awesome. So that's a young buck, a male. Look how quickly they disappear, eh? That's pretty awesome. Seeing an elk on my own out in the bush, that's just unreal. So what I'm craving most is cereal and milk, which makes sense because I've had plenty of protein, well, enough protein, but that's what my body wants, carbohydrate to break down the sugars, so that's what I'm thinking about. And on those really long-term survival things, that's the kind of food I kind of think about most, uh, like peanuts and stuff, certainly some sugar as well, cake, ice cream, custard, but mostly that's what I want to eat. So one option to get food around here is to hunt squirrels and just make a bow and arrow out of the bush. <clears throat> it's pretty easy to just cut down a piece of willow and shape it into a rough bow. <clears throat> it's not, it's not going to be great or anything, but it's enough to get a squirrel. The tricky part is making an arrow. So this is another piece of willow. Willow's got this awesome property where you can bend out the bends and it straightens out nicely. And I'll just whittle it into an arrow. See, pretty straight. And then it's just a matter of chucking some flights on it. Now I've been looking for feathers this whole trip, haven't seen any. So I'm just gonna improvise some out of some tape that was on my tripod, just to show you how quickly you can make something like this. So in 45 minutes I've made a bow, very dodgy, because I'm just, I'm not gonna use this for long. And I've got an arrow that's nice and straight. And I've put some fletchings on the back and you don't need to shoot very far to get a squirrel. They, they come quite close if you're nice and quiet. I actually don't have a small game license because when I got to Idaho, I went to the Department of Fish and Game and they said they had to do a two day course, hunting safety course, so I didn't bother doing it. Plus it would have cost me something like 250 bucks to get it, so that would be an expensive squirrel. I'll disassemble them, take my paracord and just strip that arrow and then chuck these back in the bush or oh, sorry the woods I keep calling it the bush but I've got to call it the woods over here all right I've cached my stuff in the bushes and I'm gonna head up a big hill to a cave to sleep in tonight first ridge we've got to get to and I'm looking behind myself so I can recognize where I cached my stuff on the way back. That's the valley I was up. Cave just up there. Somewhere at the base of those cliffs. Just gotta find it. Well, I've hit the limestone cliff face. I don't know whether to go left or right. Bingo. Check this out. Yep, this is gonna be home sweet home for the night, I reckon. It is getting pretty cloudy. I might just get my pack out of the rain. It's completely out of the wind. Crystals, I reckon it's calcite. This is epic. This is so epic. <sighs> About 400 mils. That's gonna last me till tomorrow. There's a reason people go for caves, caveman days. It's out of the wind, it's out of the rain. A lot of the um, historic survival things I've done where I place myself in historic survival situations, they nearly always try and find a cave as well. 
for the same reason. So I'm gonna eat some more of these mushrooms. I mean, I ate them six hours ago. Haven't made me feel sick yet. It's gonna be dinner. If I'm dead in the morning, you'll know why. I'm at the same level as I was last night. Just completely on the other side of the valley. I have to descend right down and then come up. Getting chilly, I'm gonna leave this little cave and go look for the bigger one. See if it's better. <laughs> cave be going wild. Five elk cows, it looks like. And I just looked up to my left, and that is the cave that I saw from the other side. And that's what I was aiming for. It was too dicey to climb into, so I decided to go back to the small cave. I'm gonna keep the bear spray handy because there's actually a bear den only about 50 meters away that I saw with clay. Come grab me by the feet if I get mauled. Is there any other kind of animal that would live in a place like that? Oh, cougar. <laughs> Great. But I don't think it's been used yet. It will be soon though because it's they'll go in and hibernate in there. So these kinds of things. They, they they're actually not that enjoyable even when you're not when you're not eating what you want to eat it is you do spend your lovely time just going man what am I doing this for but it does reset your appreciation again for for good food and comfort and stuff so you know it, it, there's a lot of benefits to doing something like this where you're not taking food and you're kind of getting by without matches and getting really back to basics well it has started raining and I'm so glad I'm in here. I closed my eyes and a couple of hours have passed. <laughs> I'm just so tired. It's nice seeing the rain outside and knowing I'm protected from it. It's just, uh, it's a f really good feeling. Oh, it's actually snowing. <laughs> Can you see that? Well, it's sleet. Morning. It's clouded in and it's just lightly snowed. I just been sitting up for the last five hours because I went to bed so early. I just want to get some food. I want to eat that muesli with the milk on it. Can't wait. I can hear some elk cows. I heard them. I thought they were coming from there. Now they've worked their way there. As soon as I start crunching on these rocks, I'll probably disappear. But um, I'll try and be quiet. The visibility is probably 120 meters. So I'm just backtracking just from memory. But I, that is one of the reasons why I always turn around when I'm walking. Oh, g'day. Hey, come. Some guys, some guys hunting. Sorry to walk straight through your hunting path. <clears throat> I just came, I was just barreling down this paddock and uh, these two hunting guys just yelled out to me, which actually scared the crap out of me. Cause I was like, what? I thought I was the only one out here and it's cloudy. Well, um, you were having like a full on conversation with yourself. <laughs> I was. You're probably thinking I was crazy. I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> my brother said, oh, there's another hunter. I said, no, -uh. <laughs> There's a lunatic. <laughs> So what's your name? Nick. Nick and? Brad. Brad. Uh, Nick's wearing a Zolio too. So uh, I'm an ambassador for Zolio, so there you go. People in America use them as well. How do you find it? They're pretty sweet. Yeah. It works good. Yeah. I had a s and if you're watching, it sucks. <laughs> so I knew this weather was coming in as well, which is why I went to that cave, because I was over at a lake on the other side last you night. slept in a cave? You should check it out. It's up the top there. Anyway, I'll keep hiking, and uh, I'll keep yabbering to myself. He had a Glock, a pistol on his belt and a knife and I said is that for the bears or the people and he just goes ah oh, I don't know you never know I was aiming for that and then I got sidetracked because of the fog if the cloud was thicker I wouldn't be able to see that landmark it's now breaking up in the valley a piece of piss to get home there's my cache and that's walking out way down the valley 
to breakfast. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my other one with Clay Hayes, our winner of season eight of the loan. He's a top of his game bow hunter and also a wildlife biologist. He's got a huge range of experience and he basically very generously for about eight days just showed me around the American bush. I'll put a link in the description. Made it. Alright, I've got my cereal. There's milk down here. I'm so looking forward to this. It tastes so good. I hope you enjoyed this trip. Um, I have. It's been a bit of hard work because I haven't been eating, but it, it resets your appreciation for just simple stuff like bloody breakfast cereal. <laughs> um, also check out the podcast that I did with him and also his wife Liz about how they do life. It's done very differently. Um, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting out of here and going home. <laughs> so yeah.